Team Kill Podcast. Intentional Strays. Oh, what is up, everybody? My name is Killing Spree 37. And I am Silencer. And this is the Team Silent. Kill Podcast, episode 37. <sighs> listen, listen. I hear a little animosity in your voice, okay? I hear some animosity, okay? Uh, you'll have your day when we go up to episode 214, okay? <laughs> oh, see 200 <laughs> 214 so <laughs> better need to come down buddy i know listen i have been excited for this episode <clears throat> i did a lot of uh reaching out to people for rapid fire jokes uh as far as people you've seen me play with uh they haven't gotten back to me yet assholes but a lot <laughs> of the fans actually sent us their own jokes so we're going to be reading them off uh out of like 12 i only picked like six to be honest with you so the best ones were picked uh so if yours oh, wasn't okay. picked you know you can always try again in the future when we celebrate like a year or when we ask for it i think it'll be like a little segment in case me and you ever get dry with jokes and uh we'll yeah. see how that goes for now so um let me tell people let me go ahead and start you guys off on my past weekend uh because this happened almost immediately after uh, we finished the podcast. So, uh, me, you, mm-hmm. and Dill, we met up in the in the Discord, and yeah. we went ahead, and we were, you know, it's a little weird. Me and you were already in Discord. For some reason, the remote microphone for the PS5 remote, it was live and active, okay? It wasn't muted like it was normally was. So, as soon as I finished the, the podcast... I um I mute this microphone, right? Mm-hmm. But the microphone in my remote is live, okay? Okay. So I, I tell my girlfriend, hey, can you finish <clears throat> this fucking um, seltzer? I don't want the seltzer anymore, right? Okay. And because I, I called her from the phone, right? And Yeah. She was saying like some wild, dirty, naughty things, <laughs> and you were AFK, but Dill was in the lobby in the Apex lobby, and heard it all. <laughs> oh, I was so fucking embarrassed, bro, because I was like, damn, like she was getting like real, real raunchy and shit, and. Um, Dill was like, whoa. And you were asking Dill, hey, Dill, what did she say? He's like, I don't really know. He said something about a That's cock cool. being small or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Fucking asshole. So that kicked <laughs> off immediately after. The biggest laugh I've heard. Um, until this day, I don't know exactly what Dill heard. Because I didn't really pay attention either. Because I had the noise-canceling headphones. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can't really hear the phone that well. Um so, you know, it's still in the air. But, you know, that's that's the, the luxury of deal, the behind the scenes. You get to see it all, the magic, you know? <laughs> tainted for his soul. He got tainted L- ink now. Listen, listen, I wasn't lying to that one subscriber that when he was asking me, he was like, what's it like to be a YouTuber? And I was like, man, all you do is fucking get money, play video games, and fuck bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, was, it came from the heart. Um, other than that, I've been feeling a little burned out due to work. Um, yeah. I think it's, it's like, I don't know, it's like respect and it's like the workload and overall in general, it's just not been the best situation for me at, at the moment. Um, if I could, I would quit, but I've just been like not really caring and doing whatever I want to do, you know, turning, like, turning yeah, uh, like... 15 minute breaks into thirties and, uh, <laughs> 30 minute lunches into 45s, fifties like bathroom breaks to an hour. Nah, <laughs> nah, you, <laughs> nah. I don't do, I don't do that, bro. I, I literally go in there and take a shit, but you know what I'm saying. I, I, I take one. I don't fucking sit there and pinch it off and like, oh, let me go work. Nah, bitch. Empty out that I fucking intestine <laughs> and then go to work. You know, <laughs> that's that's the fucking requirements of having me. Okay. Um, and then I was playing Warzone. Warzone hasn't been too kind to me. Um. Oh, yeah. I could see that crazy. game dying out um, by Christmas. The 80s action figure stuff, 
or the action hero thing. It's really good. It's very interesting. It's just the the gameplay, the the hackers, the the sweaty people that play the game. It is ridiculous. It is. It's gotten to the point where like. I felt a little stupid even getting the fucking Rambo skin. <laughs> I was like, I don't even play this game. Where the fuck did I spend Dumb. 20 <laughs> on the fucking shit, you know? Yeah. So, was the that same, was... you know, same how I felt whenever I bought the other two skins. The, um... Oh, the cat ones. the Halloween ones and the stupid cat one? Well, the Halloween ones, I mean, the event was still fun, you know? Yeah. They had, they had events, and, and it was, like, actually mm. fun. This one, it was like, okay, you land... They fuck you up, and it's like it. It just doesn't stop. It's either UAVs or heartbeat sensors, and then the guns that they use, bro, are just so fucking overpowered. It just doesn't make sense. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna play it a little bit longer, get a nice little video fail or or dubs, whatever, and then kind of just not even ever buy Maybe anything for the game ever again. Maybe ever. you'll run into some fucking Disney characters in the future. Well, you know, I'm pretty sure Rambo is under some type of fucking Disney wing. They practically own everything, those fucking assholes. <laughs> the monopoly they're running over there is ridiculous. You know it would be a fucking dope idea if they put up um, Drake and Josh as fucking playable characters. You know, I mean, I mean, you're throwing it out there. You're and giving Megan. them free money. And Megan, you know, and Megan. And Megan. That fucking evil bitch in there. Ah, oh, for real. She'd fucking, what does she call the food? Doofs? Doofus. <laughs> Doofus. I used to hate her too. I used to hate her so fucking much, bro. That sounds and like I was the game. youngest in my ha- in my household too. So mm. for me to hate the youngest in their household, I was just like, damn, the little bitch always fucking ruins everything. She looks like your fucking type. What do you mean? Fucking comp- compatibility. However you say that word. Or compatibility. Fucking, yeah, out, out, all the way to 100 percent You nah, I was, Megan, I could see you. Nah, I was more of a I was more of a yeah. Selena Gomez fan. <laughs> you know yeah, that, that was across the tracks on channel 29 for disney <laughs> <laughs> you know i'm just throwing it out there um how was your weekend let's let's talk about you besides now. Besides being burned out you know i had a little accident yesterday so yeah you were telling, i didn't know if you know wanted to bring full, it up the full the full story i was feeling bad couldn't fucking breathe and so i went and bought some little pills that supposedly help with uh, the congestion right right I took one. I felt good. It was around what five. Yeah, around five. Dropped it in. Started fucking going, you know, relaxing. And out of nowhere, boom, knocked the fuck out. And guess what? I didn't wake up until fucking two or three a.m. But when I woke up, I was gasping for air. I thought I was gonna die. And I was like, damn. I was scared. I think you know you know you know that feeling whenever you had whenever you took these um CBD or whatever. Yeah. Something I guess uh, equivalent to that. Okay. Now. It felt I don't know it was fucking hard to take a fucking breath so I was like fuck. So I went to the doctor, and the bitch told me I had um a lot of dust in my lungs. Damn. She tried to give me some, and all the particles you know from the shop and shit, all the chemicals, the exhaust, the pain particles all that bullshit you know right so apparently they got stuck in there and yeah that was the outcome she was trying to give me some pills and i said nah because i ain't yeah i'm not a big fan of fucking taking pills for some reason i don't know about the other people you know or you fucking pill me up i i ain't ain't into that that shit i'd rather do yeah i'd rather do some you know natural shit so i ended up buying some essential oils for you know to clean up your your your, you know, your breathing, your congestion, clear all that shit up and make it all nice and clean, right. I guess. But we'll see if that helps. And um, here's the funny thing. She told me not to drink any ice. And can you hear this? A little bit. I heard it. <laughs> Look at that. Fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. He went right to the ice. Yeah, I used to work in construction. And... Um... One day, because like sure, they yeah. used to smoke, they used to smoke in the building, right? That we were renovating, or mm-hmm. just working into, and they weren't supposed to. And they mm-hmm. would always do it during break. They would close the door. They'd fucking smoke in that little room. 
uh, sawdust, oh, okay. concrete dust, like you name it, right? Like construction. If you're if you're not safe, that could change. I mean, especially a lifetime. If you work there, you're gonna fucking you're gonna get that type of dust. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Uh, one one time I got sick and I had like bronchitis and shit and I had like a smoker's cough and he was like, "Do you smoke?" and I'm like, "Nah, I don't smoke." And he's like, "Well, <laughs> fuck, like you have like a smoker's cough," and I'm like, "Nah." I was like, "I, I'm in a room where people smoke, you know, during construction." He's like, "Yeah, you might want to consider a fucking a different room or a different career because uh, you weren't wearing the mask, or <clears throat> well, no, I mean." There, you weren't even supposed to wear masks unless you were up on the floors that were drywalling or painting. Ah, uh, yeah. See over here. I mean, I know you're supposed to wear them, but it's kind of rare whenever all the chemicals start pushing out or have a car, and so it's not something you keep in hand. Like if I were for a body shop, then yeah, because all you do is paint, you know. But right, I guess over time it just accumulates and fucks you up. Yeah. So, yeah. So when I when I realized that that was like what was fucking me up i ended up just fucking filing for unemployment <laughs> i was like i'm never going back yeah that shit fucks you up if you're not careful so yeah. we'll see what happens i didn't feel a little bit better but i don't know how to clean all that shit up she told me just drink a lot of fucking distilled water and push that shit out so we'll see well, yeah hopefully you get better you know knock on wood for <clears> silencer <throat> let's you know have a little clap for enjoyment for the yeah, ice you know. nice drink <laughs> You know, <laughs> usually ice is hurting you and now it's helping you you know what i'm saying yeah <laughs> that was a mexican joke <laughs> <laughs> for those that didn't get it you know ice. yeah for for those of you in, in attendance <laughs> <laughs> those that have a nice little green card you don't know what this is <laughs> <laughs> you always throw out the green card they might just be from here <laughs> The lucky ones. <laughs> um, Fucking funny. What else did you, what, anything else you did? No, just uh, bullshit working and getting shit done. Um, I haven't had a chance to get into that course that I bought, but hopefully during these days and it's just been busy as fuck. Hopefully try to get, hopefully this week or next week, try to space some shit so I can, you know, have yeah. a little bit more free time. So. Yeah, this just is my last week of being things. busy. And I'm I'm like yep. so excited just to not fucking be busy anymore. I want to do YouTube shit. I want to do TikToks. Like I just want to be like my normal self. Yeah. And then I had my books. I had a book too that I was reading, and I stopped at the first chapter. And I I got busy. I fucking went on vacation. I got COVID. Like a lot of shit hit, and I haven't had a chance to hit the book yet. But uh, hopefully, you know, within a few a few days by Saturday. I should be cool, and then Sunday, um, after I get off work, I should be able to fucking get back to my normal schedule. And then, to be honest with you, I might not be busy like this ever again. I might just start focusing on YouTube and doing shit now. Hell yeah. I'm going to try and get into the whole content creation shit, so we'll see how, how it goes. Yeah, it's, yeah. if you need any help, to... you know, he, he made his own little TikTok. He's going to help you guys uh, do marketing stuff. I told him he needs to do fucking graphic design tiktoks okay the, don't don't just like limit little, yourself to marketing like do little do it yourself type of shit how to do, do it yourself or? for like photoshop uh memes or just overall jokes like um like you can take memes and like apply them with a little acting with your family and shit you know what i'm saying or you can even do it yourself and pretend to be like your dad so for like example um, I'm not going to give too much details so people won't do it, but, uh, when you sent me the boxer one, remember that your dad said you look like a boxer? Oh yeah. Yeah. That you look like <laughs> his dad <laughs> said he looked like Canelo and there was kind of a resemblance. He might've been a little darker yeah. <laughs> and shorter. <laughs> um, if you would have used the second meme that you sent me as like a TikTok, that mm. would have, that'd be funny, bro. And especially cause all those fuckers on there are promoting something graphic design art photoshopping marketing For real. um if you find that little niche there's like if you do serious stuff and <clears throat> educational shit and funny shit you'll probably get like a nice little mix get your feet out the ground hell yeah but listen we'll see we'll see we'll see episode 37 like i said i reached <clears throat> out to i reached out to friends i reached out to cuz lightyear he never got back to me <laughs> peace and love to him uh <laughs> i hit up deal <laughs> Dill said, oh, okay. 
and just never said anything else. He's like, oh, I guess, and just never hit me back. Um, okay, but, so I mean, did you hear Tywin has a big ass tennis court in the backyard? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, he's he's still walking to his uh, computer right now. You know, <laughs> it's a little far from where he parked his yacht. <laughs> um, so we have not only just rapid fire jokes for each other that we wrote, we also yeah. have the fan jokes, the top six, and we're gonna read them off the first. Top. Yep, we're, we're going to read them off, okay? It's time for a rapid fire. Rapid, rapid fire. Players ready up. Three, two, one. This one is from Nate. He says, light travels faster than sound, which is why you seem bright until you spoke. Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a little offensive. <laughs> this coming from Mr. Juanito. You have so many gaps in your teeth, it looks like your tongue is in jail. Headshot. <laughs> that was a little, you know, a little... A little offensive. <laughs> oh, I hurt. <laughs> we were poor, okay? <laughs> uh, this one is oh, from Adam. Care. Your face is just fine, but we'll have to put a bag over that personality. Headshot. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it'll fit. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, bro. It's still, it's still have room in that bag. Headshot. <laughs> Mr. Addict says, your face makes the onions cry. Headshot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was, that was cool. That was cool. That was nice. All right, good job, Alex. Uh, this one is from Ethan. Yeah. You're the reason the gene pool needs a lifeguard. Headshot. <laughs> okay. Who was that? Who was that? <laughs> yeah, that was Ethan. You want to want to clap at Ethan? <laughs> All right, Ethan, I got you. I got you. Not right now, you know. Yeah. Missy has something to say. Missy, Missy, you have something on your chin. Where? No, the third one down. Headshot. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Missy, <laughs> that was a good one. I'm gonna give you a headshot. It's a heady. Listen, I'm not that fat, okay? I'm actually, you know, I'm actually gifted in having a decent chin. <laughs> a nice All right, now, profile. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice profile, okay? It's a nice density, okay? The beard hides, you know, maybe the, the one and a half chin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now it's time for our shit, okay? The professionals. <laughs> Ready up. <laughs> Silencer My is a type of guy... Up. To stop and engage with the guy who asks, who's your cell phone provider, knowing his <laughs> credit's bad. Headshot. Or no credit. <laughs> He's like, oh, can you, can you run that again? <laughs> can I go they get uh, my other papers? <laughs> Headshot. Hey, uh, can you come, you can come with somebody else and I'll just add you to the plan. <laughs> Headshot. This one looks like he was drawn by a left hand. Headshot. <laughs> hey. But it was the person right-handed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said no. <laughs> nah, because, you know, there's uh, there's lefties out there that know how to draw. <laughs> I'm not talking about the good lefties. I'm talking about the bad lefties. Mm, attack them. <laughs> <laughs> this fool silencer's hands are so greasy from mechanic work that the girl he was dating at the time tested positive for 530W. Headshot. For 5W30. <laughs> <laughs> for those that don't know, that's engine oil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, he used high mileage for the harlots. Headshot. <laughs> high mileage action. I collect the metal debris. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. This fool has his aim preset set to. Can you guess? No. Take a guess. You have it um, set to. Michael J. Fox roller coaster mode. Headshot. <laughs> All right, time. Game over. <laughs> time. <laughs> Damn, Michael J. Fox. <laughs> I don't think people know Michael J., bro. That's fucking um, uh, Back to the Future, Mar Marty. <laughs> <laughs> those that don't understand, here to explain it. <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> You're going to hell. <laughs> Oh shit. Um 
That was really exciting. That was nice. I like the fan jokes. I like when the fans interact. Uh, the, let me tell you, the jokes yeah, were better than the questions that we received <laughs> over the past few days, weeks. I think you know those this. questions were, I don't know, I think they were written by their fucking infant brothers or sisters. Well, it's always the same question, and then it's like, it's it's never with any context, you know? Maybe if they reworded it, I could understand it, but uh, with the typos and the terrible grammar, it's like, damn, like, I don't understand the question. <laughs> Um, but keep sending them, <laughs> keep sending them. And if I find a decent question, we'll read them off. We'll have a segment at the end. Um, I, I'll figure right. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, we're going to get into this podcast episode. Uh, a discussion is going to be had that doesn't really reflect the views of me, but, uh, it's too big. I mean, it's multiple actually YouTubers. Uh, that are involved in this but currently now it's just being down to two youtubers uh so yesterday i was scrolling down twitter um i saw a tweet from h2o delirious who is a big youtuber uh he had his little baby uh he has a girlfriend that he plays games with he has about 13.3 million subscribers on youtube And he did this tweet kind of explaining something. I click on the tweet and it was this whole speech about how um, there's a story that is true-ish. I don't want to say too much true or um, he pretty much uh, confirmed the story that was floating around that he was uh, fooled by two of his peers in... Mm -hmm. um, being recorded on the phone while he was having phone sex with a fan slash groupie. <clears throat> and uh, they recorded it to try to get a face reveal from the guy. It was nothing malicious. It was simply a joke, you know? Yeah. But it did cause a uh, strain on their relationship. And in addition to the, I don't know how to really say it. It caused trust issues, you know? Yeah. Uh, because one, they recorded him having phone sex. Two, mm-hmm. uh, because they knew very little people, um, the girl might have been 17 when she said she was older. You know? Oh, okay. <clears throat> so that was the story between the Banana Bus crew, which is also known as the Vanoss crew, which consists of Vanoss, H2O, Terrorizer, Mini Lad, Wildcat, Four Zero, uh, Executioner. Basically, I do work. All those guys, right? Every, if you know the Vanos, you know Vanos crew. You know the main gamers, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, another friend of Delirious's, which was Ohm Wrecker, um, has a bit of a lengthy rapport of, um falling out with these YouTubers and trying to put them on blast with stories or personal things that they may have done to kind of get them canceled because he feels a way. That's how I feel that it is anyways. Um, So he put out this story and two groups, which is going to be Delirious's group, which consists of Delirious, Omrecker, Cartoons, Dead Squirrel, Gorilla Fint, The list goes on, right? I think that's about it, really. So, Omrecker, uh, for the past however many months, especially during the pandemic, has been playing alone a lot or playing with a lot of unknown friends. And it kind of seemed like they had a little bit of a rift. And nobody really came out and said anything. And yesterday, Omrecker went on to Drama Alert, which is Keemstar's platform. And was sharing fucking screenshots, audio that seemed extremely chopped up from a Discord where Louis Mm -hmm. Caliber was saying that they, as a group, were sharing nudes of groupies with each other, um, which is boy behavior. You know what I'm saying? I don't don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I mean, if you send a nude to somebody... As long as they're not putting it out on a like public 
platform. Um, that's that's where I find the the. I don't know how you feel, but I find that to be like super bad. You know. Yeah. Um. So he went on Keemstar. He pretty much aired out Delirious, aired out Wildcat, and was posting a bunch a. Uh, text messages, DMs, uh, emails from people saying that they they had an experience with H two O Delirious. That he was very, um, they he always just wanted something sexual from them, and once he didn't get it or he did get it, and he would block them and delete them and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, uh, it's a whole shit show, but. Uh, to cut it short for you, because I know you probably don't know these gentlemen, um, this is childhood. This is people that I grew up watching uh, in high mm-hmm. school. You know what I'm saying? Uh, part of the reason that I want to become a YouTuber is because of people like Vanoss and H2O Delirious, cartoons, the Banana Bus crew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Omrecker has a personality that... If you make fun of him, he seems like he's going to retaliate. He seems like he's going to be that salty little friend that um, you you make a joke, like, knock, knock, who's there? Like, oh, like, not your dad or something. He'd be like, oh, yeah, well, you fucking, you said the N-word, and I have the, the file saved from back in the day. He seems like fuck? that type of person, right? That own um, record guy? The own record guy, yes. So, mm, okay. Um, I think that Omrecker potentially destroyed his career because now he doesn't just have um, people that are going to see this and think, wow, this guy is not trustworthy. But he's just burning bridges with with popular YouTubers and stuff like that. So before we go to the second part of the story, how do you feel about what was said? You think Omrecker was in the right exposing these guys or do you think that he might have jumped the gun And maybe stuff like this isn't so um, offensive. I mean, it's offensive as a person. I mean, whatever happened back then, you know, happened back then. But I think there's, it has to be a fine line when you know it's time to fucking pull the trigger and attack back. Right. So do you feel like Omrecker was attacking back or do you feel like the other people should attack back? I feel like they should have attacked back. I don't know. However you're saying in the stuff I've been reading online, it seems like home records, yeah, like you said, that that type of person are just... Technical difficulties, guys. Sorry about that. Silence, what you were saying? I forgot where I left off. Said that if it was uh, in my case, yeah, I would definitely, you know, pull the trigger and shoot back. Because it's not... Like, how are you going to be friends from childhood and then, you know, just because some shit didn't go your way you throw this kind of shit at the other person. Just feels right. a little, you know, a little shady. Well, <clears throat> this guy came in really late in the picture, right? This is when Delirious was pretty much forming his own little crew of successful little gamers. Community. Yeah, his own little successful gamers. They had a lot of uh good times playing like Rainbow Six Siege. You have a bunch of Minecraft um, but you could always tell that they didn't like to play with them because of how they would talk to him and how he would react to certain things in Minecraft. And, okay. um, when you start to hear like people saying that they had morals and they have stuff like this and hearing the, like Omrecker kept saying that he heard stories about these certain things. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that it wasn't, how do I say this? It wasn't, he wasn't going to use it, but when they fall out, he's going to use it? What what kind of shit is that? Like you, you have in the backpack ready for some stupid shit to happen. To pull exactly. it out. Exactly. Screenshots, right? When he's yeah. digging deep. We're in the year 2021, okay? He's digging back t- 10 years. 10, <laughs> 9, 8 years. Like 8 to 10 years back in tweets. And is yeah. finding stuff and is screenshotting it to use it against them. So that's crazy. The, another part of the story was that um, he's known for doing some shit like this 
and he had another guy called Mark Plyer or some Marky Plyer that he was yeah. throwing shit with. And when he wanted to speak out about that guy, a lot of people cut him off. And then Delirious is the latest person to cut this guy off. Doesn't want to play with them for obvious reasons, right? I wouldn't want to play with a scumbag like that either. You know, people oh, that yeah. they use your information yeah. and shit. You know what I'm saying? And use it against yeah. you. That is stupid. So, yep. Um, the other story was that he started showing a bunch of interesting DMs, right, between Delirious and chicks on OnlyFans, right? And like I said earlier, yeah. he has a girlfriend, and they have a child together. Beautiful, funny, little, you know, little girl. Mm-hmm. And it got a little interesting, ladies and gentlemen. Because one of the tweets of the screenshots, it was like, he was like setting up for the biggest threesome of all time. (laughs) I'm not, listen. So the girlfriend came to his aid, right? The girlfriend has an OnlyFans type of thing. She has her own website and she does the occasional boob cosplay photo and she does it for like a monthly subscription fee right okay um <clears throat> this next part might sound a little terrible um i hope nobody gets offended because you know what it's not my style and anything anytime i say something it's it's not my style i'm not looking down on it i'll add jokes to it but you know i'm i'm i'm, I'm not really shitting on it you know what i'm saying to each of their own okay Okay. So, would you have a girlfriend that has some type of OnlyFans content like that? Where it's just photos of nudes? And mind you, she's a recent mother. No. You're asking if I would date a, a girl that has a OnlyFans and stuff like that? So she, I'm pretty sure she did this before she met him, and then she, cause she's continuing to do it after she had a baby, after uh, they publicly announced that they're in a relationship. You know, yeah. Would you Would you be open to that? No, I would okay. not. So I, in addition to said, I didn't think that this was a good thing. <laughs> right it wasn't it's, it's not my style so okay uh one of the messages was <laughs> uh he reached out the girl said um uh, hey you know uh, it's i really want to get to know you you're you're a nice guy but are you with somebody and he's like yeah <laughs> she's right here <laughs> <laughs> he's like aren't you with somebody and she's like oh i feel bad and then delirious is like no don't feel bad He's like, I thought you were with somebody too. Like, I saw a kid in one of your videos. And then I'm like, hold the fucking phone. Are they actively chasing women? Like, we barely know what Delirious, we don't know what he looks like, right? He's he's mm-hmm. going on like 10, 10, 12, 13 years, whatever, you know, of yeah. hiding his face and not being found, Okay. A lot of people I'm thought that this food was though. ugly. Yeah, nobody nobody knew nothing about him, okay? Okay. You get little things here and there. You know, his name, his birthday, his his age mm-hmm. maybe, right? But not what he looks like. Not personal shit, okay. Not personal, yeah. And this is why, okay? But everybody thought this food was gay or ugly. He's <laughs> out here he's out here getting women. <laughs> He's out here getting the 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 vagine, you know. So, <laughs> uh, we're gonna have a brief guest, okay? Uh, what's her what's her bio? What should I add to her bio? Um, well, first, let me bring her out here, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in Team Kill podcast or in general, my channel, my content, we have the original Killing Spree thirty seven, my girlfriend. Mrs. Sprewell, how are you doing today? 
I'm good. How is everybody doing? All right. See, listen, we brought her on here for a specific reason, okay? A lot of people say okay. that I hate women. I don't hate women, okay? There's just a lot of certain things that women do that I just don't approve of. And, you know, my opinion shouldn't matter if you're doing it, okay? Don't be hurt, okay? So, <laughs> me and you discussed this yesterday about Delirious having a girlfriend that's uh, making only fan content, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, is that something you think that's in a relationship could be a deal breaker or do you think that to each their own? What do you, how do you, how do you feel? I think I can see both sides of the spectrum because it really is to each their own because relationships in their dy- dynamics on their own, they're very different for everybody, but it could also break a relationship because you don't want nobody looking at your girl naked. Like that's privacy. That's stuff for you, for her. Like, Nobody else needs to be looking at that stuff besides you in a relationship. But, I mean, get your money, I guess. Um, so, like, I, as a person, I feel like that would be a deal breaker. Like, I'm, I'm I, you know, I put, like, my relationship with your relationship, like, us, you know, in their shoes, right? Yeah. I, I feel like it would be a deal breaker. I asked Silencer. Silencer said that it would be a deal breaker. <laughs> okay. So, the other thing was... Um, he was reaching out to other chicks and he was saying stuff like, Hey, like the girl had asked him, Hey, well, are you with somebody? And he was like, yeah, you know, I was like, but she's right here with next to me. So was he potentially setting up the threesome or do you think that he was just like nonchalant there, have an open relationship type of dynamic? I mean, it sounds like they have an open relationship, but at the same time, how open is it? Because, I mean, if you can sit there and DM other girls and your girlfriend's okay with this, is it really a relationship? Kind of just sounds like you're on house to split the bills. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not a relationship. I'm sorry. It's right. really not. <laughs> All right. And then the last question is, do you think that she is doing it to him? What do you mean? Like, if he's reaching out for other women, do you think she's reaching out to other men for only fan content? I wouldn't doubt it. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty much about it. So so you pretty much agree with that, what I said, right? Yes. Just down there. All right. Well, that was Lady, you know, Mrs. Prewell. She can go now. You know, we're going to finish podcasting. Hi guys. She thought this was easy. She thought it was real easy. <laughs> this is the second take. <laughs> she, you know, it was the second take. So... That was from a woman's perspective. Silencer, how did you feel about what she said? Yeah, everything is true. I mean, like she says, uh, depends on the dynamic. If both want to be in an open relationship, then I don't see how that's going to be a deal breaker. Right. Both yeah. are on the same page. And that's cool, but to each of us own. And for me personally, nah. Just like yeah. That. Yeah. I just thought it was a little weird because um, it, it sounded like from a lot of the exchanges that a lot of people from the banana bus crew were actually getting her nudes or was a little envious that he got her nudes and were reaching out like and sharing sliding around. Into the d- yeah. Got her nudes, her nudes, her pictures, her, her stuff. They say that she said she talked to the guy and she said that it wasn't her photos they were sharing, but you got to wonder, you know, people, you know, there are friends that will go out there, see the chick that you're fucking and, and, um, do a little investigation themselves, you know? So, yeah, you got to wonder. So on the serious aspect of it, um, allegations are being thrown around left and right. I don't believe any of it to be truthful. Uh, I believe that there was a story that delirious confirmed and says that the girl might've not been his age, but if people Ooh. put the chick, okay. If people put the chick in that situation, Knowing that uh, the chick's age, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's more on the people setting it up than Delirious um, feeling himself. Because he did say that he was young and very uh, crude or prude. And yeah. uh, when it came that, to, yeah. yeah, when it came to like women, like he was like, damn, people mm-hmm. are actually into me and shit. So that's, that's what got him happy and excited and stuff like that, too. So, um, I think that we're not, I think this is far from over, but I feel like 
Uh, for Omrecker's gaming career with anybody, uh, his channel's gonna die. It's it's tough to say. He was he was a decent content creator. Um, he had his funny moments, his funny jokes, but I always felt like he was a, like the bottom tier of any friend group that he was in, right? Yeah. Um. So I did unsubscribe from his channel because I didn't feel like, you know, if if um, and another thing too was that a fan of a non-partisan person was testing to see if Olmrecker was actually going to fact-based his allegations and sent him a email with inaccurate information and that he took and ran with it, uh, put it on tweets, read it on the Keemstar drama alert show, and it it was fake. The guy tagged him. He's like, hey, does this look familiar? Here's the email. Here's the email in its hole. And it was fake. One of them was, uh, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah. so now that you know that information, do you feel like this was, it's easily proven that maybe like it could be fake? Or do you feel like the person might have um, did something where maybe like real stories might not be heard of because he did this? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard. I mean, regardless if, like, for example, they have a story, fucking Photoshop. It's easy to Photoshop something, you know, like a text or whatever. I've At that it, yeah. point, it's going to be your word with that screenshot with new minds against the other person. So right here, you have a dilemma where it's kind of hard to, you know, like, oh, but we see the screenshot. Hmm. How can you prove that the screenshot is not fake if, you know, if it's... uh if it's drawn to you, like for example, you do a screenshot of me, and then I'm like, "Yo, that shit's fake." How the fuck am I gonna prove it's fake? You know? Yeah, and me and you do it to each other constantly. Me and yeah, you so Photoshop it's, shit, it's, uh, just like make jokes. So I don't know. I think that's a. <clears throat> it's a very steamy hot tub to be in. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we'll get off of that. Um, I'm definitely going to be able to keep people updated in this because, like I said, favorite content creators, you know. I don't like the drama either. Mm -hmm. But when I was reading this back and forth stuff, uh, the allegations that were being thrown around, it did make you look at these people twice. But um, at the end of the day, I think the truth will prevail. And yeah. I think that, you know, uh, people that if they were wronged, they're, they'll find justice, and if there were people that were just lying, they'll find, um, you know, they'll find, yeah, they'll find their own little problem and stuff like that. But we'll keep you updated, okay? You know? Yeah, so, buddy. Enough of the serious talk. Let's get into the real, you know, the real stuff, okay? The real gaming stuff. This one, uh, I feel like this should have happened years ago, back when that little. Getting uh, early? <laughs> no, I'm never listen. I'm never getting a hairline. <laughs> I've seen people do like Beijing. I'm not doing that shit, okay? I'll go bald, okay? I don't give a fuck anymore. You could have had me for like the two minutes when I was shaving my head. Like, I wish I had my hairline. <laughs> I don't want it no more. Um, I guess Netflix uh, is being rumored to be expanding to video games. How do you feel about that? Mm. I think right now it's going to be a, a little little risky move. Not only say that because of the, you can't be... I mean, Google tried this, and I'm pretty sure you know how that's going. Amazon yeah. tried this, and you know how that's going. Yeah. So it's a risky, it's a risky move. And I did read about that. It's going to be like, what, arcade games and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. So I, I don't see it being a big hit, to be honest with you. Probably gonna um, be a little hype and just die out. Yeah, there's two things. Um, it could be something decent if they partnered up with somebody. You have to partner up with somebody. You yeah. can't just like, for example, right now we have PlayStation Now, which is exactly what they want, right? Because I think yeah. they, I think, I think mailing out games. In this day and age is retro. I'm sorry, Kay. I know we're not that old. It's retro. It's it's not the best thing right now. 
to send no. out somebody a fucking video game. It gets scratched. The person uh, loses it. It, it's, it costs an arm and a leg to get back. It's not yeah. the best thing anymore. I forgot what service did that where they used to mail fucking video games. I did it twice and Game I play. had the game for like a day. Or like, I'm sorry, I had the game for like three days and I never played it and I sent it back. It was Gamefly, buddy. There you go, Gamefly. Yep, Gamefly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think that that option is terrible, right? I think it's terrible yeah. to mail out games. Um, there's another one. I don't know if you have it, but outside of McDonald's, it's like Redbox. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah, have games too. Like yeah, they have yeah. games too. That's decent, right? Because you get to get the game. Uh, but renting it, yeah. You know, streaming yeah. it, however, uh, will be game breaking. But you have to realize it's gonna have to be, like I said, it's gonna have to be uh, an exclusive to consoles only, and not just a Blu-ray player. You know. How are you going to play with the fucking Blu-ray remote? Yeah, but you see the thing where, where they say on the little article is um, they're trying to experiment game-like content, interactive, um, such as the 2018 Black Mirror um, oh, interactive. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. That, no, I mean, to me, that's just interactive, but it's nowhere near being a game. Yeah. Now, to translate an actual game to play in your Netflix account with the remote. I mean, the, it's, it's going to be hard. The only thing I'm thinking is they're going to start selling a remote. But then again, you're just looking at another Google, Amazon streaming service. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and so, then, you know what um, else, too? Like, I think, I mean, if they really, really, really were going to do it, it'd have to be uh, the best dynamic, which is going to be your phone, mobile phones. Oh, yeah, true. You know, I think we're thinking too big. Maybe they're just trying to do it for mobile phones and then maybe work their way up to uh, Sony or to a, um, you know, a fucking uh, Microsoft. But, I mean, this could be good for indie gamers, uh, developers, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think it'd be good for indie gamers, but they're a long way from it. And uh, But I think that they they're on the money. I just think that it's a little late, but if they execute the idea well, uh, and like I said, they might start from phone games. Yeah, you might be able to have something there. Yeah. Now, would you be participating in getting this? It comes out with some uh, decent titles that they look interesting to play. i definitely jump in the wagon and try it out. Right. Yeah, it might be, uh, you know, renting a game. That might be death of the, of the digital copy. You think so? I, I think mean, so. a real artist, they're still, instead of buying it, they just put a timer on the fucking title and they just pull it out. Yeah. Oh, you know what? A timer. Yeah. Like, let's say, because, like, I beat Resident Evil, right? It took me 12 hours to beat. Um, yeah. You'd have, I mean, to be fair, you'd have to put, like, a nice little timer, right? Not too much where it's like you should have just bought it in person or digital. But not uh, not too low where it's like, damn, like you didn't even get your money's worth, you know? I mean, that's, if they do something, I'm pretty sure they're going to do a 24-hour timer where you rent it and then uh, just charge per rent. Like, you know how Blockbuster was doing. Oh, yeah, like per day. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if you were able to, like I said, I beat that in 12 hours. I have another 12 to go. And then after it expires, boom, it takes it out of my system. Um, I don't think you'd have to have digital anymore. You know, we're not seeing CDs and albums being sold. So, I mean, for games, it's only right that that's the next thing that's going to fall in line, you know? Yeah, it could be the next, uh, I could see it. I could see it be the new, new way of, um, playing around and having like a subscription, subscription type. So, right. No, we'll yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, no, that's good. All right. Yeah, I'll look into it. Um. Like I said, I used the PlayStation Now stuff, and uh, yeah. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, it saved me from buying a lot of shitty games. <laughs> For real. For real. So uh, let's see where that goes along. Um, are you familiar with Charlie Bit My Finger? Yeah. You know, maybe in a couple of years, maybe even right now, a lot of people would be like, I've never seen Charlie Bit My Finger. 
I was a YouTube video of a little boy and his baby brother. And he, the little baby brother got Charlie's finger, or I'm sorry, got the brother's finger and mm-hmm. bit the finger, and which caused the funny reaction where he said, oh, Charlie, you bit me. You bit me, Charlie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, right now, it's going to sound like, oh, I'm going to go look for it. And guess what? You are not going to be able to find it. Because the Charlie Bit My Finger video is selling as an NFT and will be removed from YouTube. <laughs> uh, technically, wow. since we're talking about it before it got removed, it already has been removed and is selling as a non-fudgeable token. Wow. How do you feel about that? Uh, I don't know. Good for the... Because, I mean, you saw how much the, that she got yes. was bidding for. Yeah. Now, for the for the two kids or who the father is, I mean, imagine just having that shit for a little video, innocent video, you decided just to record. Yeah. The, the reward you get for doing nothing. Now, on the internet side, since they removed everything, it's kind of not fair. Because it's something, you know, you want to share your friends, laugh with. They're like, hey, you know what? I have this funny ass video. Check it out. Boom, send it. Or both have yeah. a laugh, you know, bring up their mood. Now, if this is the stage where this happened. I can only imagine this is going to happen to a bunch of videos now. And what if all the fucking media gets taken down by bidders and purchasers? And it's like, oh, sorry, you two fucking take it out. And then what? Now you're left with no fucking funny. Imagine all the funny videos that you've ever watched on, on YouTube. Those little yeah. Vine type. If every all of them got fucking purchased as a, you know, as a NFT, imagine how many of those would be taken out, and you won't find them anymore unless you fucking purchase it. Right, and you know what? That's crazy. I'm even thinking about like the deeper, darker criminal link. What if YouTube buys it and now they own it? Hmm. You know, I don't know yeah. how I don't know exactly what NFTs are. I know that you could buy things, but the thing is, is that I'm pretty sure somebody has this in their phone downloaded. Like it's, it's they heard that it was going to be removed. They're like, you know what? Let me download this shit real quick. Now I own it. Technically, yeah, you own it, but what can you do when you own it? What can you do? You own Nothing. a piece of history, but like, what what can you do with it? Can you put it in commercials? Can you, um. Like, what the fuck can you do? What can you do? That's when I got hung up on the NFT stuff. Because I did try to put you onto it uh, to sell pictures of what you were taking pictures of at at the time. But when I looked into it, it was a little confusing. And it's like, okay, so what happens after you own this um, thing? You know? Can you... It's a dead end road. Yeah, it's a dead end road. Like, what can you do? Like... Do you have the rights to it? Can you like? Are you gonna put it in commercials? Are you? What are you gonna do? What do, you, do you get the royalties mm. from it? The royalties. No. So what I was reading. This is the NFT is not even a copyright. It just basically you as a purchaser, it prevents the spread or use of the meme. But the original creator still has full copyright of it. Yeah, and then so every the time, fuck? every time that it's sold, the original person that's that. Uh, content right that has it he gets paid every time it sells it's a continuous yeah. cycle of money yeah but i mean think about it like this one sold for what 700 whatever thousand yeah. who the hell's gonna buy that i mean i know they bought it now but i mean it, this is not something that's gonna keep happening i mean possibly in the next five ten years you possibly get another like one yeah another buyer that wants it but this is not like something you're gonna have to you know, be like, oh shit, I'm gonna sell it and get fucking money on a monthly, you know, um, basis. Right. Yeah. But like I said, what if, what if like companies start to buy it and then they find ways to monetize this in ways that like they never could have imagined? You know what I'm saying? Be like, oh yeah, you seen that meme? Well, the only way to see it is in YouTube. Go over there. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that because it's like what you said. Imagine they start taking stuff. Imagine they start taking, like, they take, um, 
like just like iconic YouTube things that you can YouTube. The first YouTube video, uh, Charlie bit my finger, uh, let's say Gondam style, like Soldier Boy. Um, his first his first song on because he's been like in the news lately. What if he sells his shit as an NFT? You know. That was the first rapper on YouTube and their first rap video on YouTube. You know how many rap videos there is now? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I want to I wanna see. I need to I need to ask some. I had some guy, too, the fucking, that was explaining shit to me. I got to fucking ask him to come on here to explain what the hell the mm, NFT that's is. Fucking, it's fucking weird. Look, uh, there's another little article that just, I'm just going to read a little short one. So, Okay. There's a, um, <clears throat> what is it? So there's the Meta Coven is uh, one of the owners, right, of uh, of the word NFT. Right. And this one said he owns the T part of the acronym. <laughs> so he paid he paid just to own the letter T in NFT. <laughs> the token. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I don't know. I feel like this NFT thing is just, um, it, it it might bring people good wealth, but I don't know. It just seems like <clears throat> people who were bored just decided, hey, let's build a stupid system where people just can buy ridiculous things and take their money. Right. Yeah. It's, fucking, oh. it's weird. You know, I can't wait for Kim Kardashian to go up there and sell her fucking sex tape with Ray J. <laughs> See how many fucking <laughs> fungible tokens that's going to be. <laughs> um, fucking so, going to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> or Kanye, you know. He, he, he missed seeing uh, Kim naked. <laughs> Northwest. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, imagine she buys her own sex tape as an NFT and just, like, destroys it. Fucking wild. Oh, the fucking the world would be in shambles. So yeah, I, I thought it, I thought it'd be interesting to see like what the future of YouTube would be if if uh, they did that. But who knows what they're gonna do with it? I want to see what they what the person does with it is going to be what other people do in fucking domino effect, you know? Yeah. So I want to see what they do with it. So I think it's a little premature to say that it might be the end for YouTube, or it just it won't be like the the main home for YouTube. But I want to see exactly what happens with this in the future. <laughs> so that's funny uh, this one's a funny story and I, I I love it this is a fucking level of trolling that's amazing okay so somebody pretended to be the rapper the baby and got verified on Twitch and started trolling every fucking person that was able to get trolled on a, on a trolling rampage super trolling rampage um first off how could twitch allow this to happen how can they verify Don't, yeah that's weird verify him do you before. think it's an inside job it, it could be it could be somebody that uh just wanted to show how fucking fake they are so he was trolling uh pokimane and other top streamers uh, for those of you that don't know, he has one of the best songs called Rockstar with Roddy Rich. Um, recently, he got his shit banned on May 19th. They banned him uh, in typical fashion because they said that they were alerted about the fake account going around trolling people and just being a headache. I'm trying to find specific things that he says. It doesn't really get that far, but a lot of people said that he was going on Pokemon's thing saying show ass. <laughs> bend over <laughs> show the feats you know what the fuck yeah so if, do i think it's an inside job um, yes <laughs> i think somebody knew hilarious. how they operated and knew that they would get somebody to to gravitate towards the thing they got excited they blew their wad and when they saw this shit um it's just funny because it's a it's an official account official account just going to to uh pokemon thing like what that neck do um like <laughs> just going on there and just saying a bunch of shit that's fucking wild yeah it is fucking crazy and if you go to the chat logs uh he originally mm -hmm. went by the name use code nick 
on Twitch prior to taking on the baby moniker. Um, so they don't think it was him. He hasn't confirmed it, but he's a rapper. You know, he's out here getting bitches, making fucking hit records. I doubt he fucking has time to stream on Twitch and tell fucking Pokemon what that fucking <laughs> dunked it up. <laughs> Follow know? to join the the baby army. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> 16 partnered. Point two. partnered. He possessed a Followers. partnered member. Yeah, bro. I want to I want to meet the gentleman thousand. who fucking who did this shit. This is next level Smart. trolling. That's funny as hell. Yeah. Imagine like he was just like getting donations left and right. <laughs> Do a fake account. Crazy. All right. Get rich got, with me. Yeah, super fucking That's crazy. <coughs> All right. Um this next one's kind of funny and it's really short. Woman arrested for allegedly sending customer bottled water instead of PS5. Don't they tell you not to buy shit on eBay, ladies and gentlemen? Do they not tell y'all? <laughs> this is for all the thirsty motherfuckers. No <laughs> one <of> PS5. <laughs> the thirsty fucking people that paid who knows how much for the next gen console just gets caught lacking, bro. So stay thirsty, um, my friends. Super fucking thirsty. You know what? It might have been Dasani that has salt in the water, and they might have been uber thirstier. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it says here from the article: a 41-year-old unemployed woman in Shiga, Japan, has been arrested for fraud after allegedly sending a customer two bottles of water instead of a PS5. Listen, she could have sent five. You know, <laughs> she could have done that. So it says here the woman had purchased a PS5 from the suspect, from the suspected fraud, uh, for around sixty-five thousand yen, which is five hundred and ninety-six dollars. Earlier this year, uh, the PS arrived cash on delivery, but in the box there was only a pair of two-liter bottles filled with water. The woman could not get in touch with the suspect and then contacted the police. So she shipped the package, but I don't remember what was in it. The suspect said, denying alleged fraud charges. So she doesn't really say that she did it on purpose. And of course, you should deny the, you know, you know what your life is worth. You're going to sit there and be like, oh, you know, somebody else bought two gallons of water from me. (laughs) Now, were they bathtub water? Mm -hmm. Hot tub water? Hot tub water? (laughs) You know, uh, we'll go back a little bit, but. Twitch, um, they pretty they they banned the the chick right from hot tub streaming. And oh, then, did they? Well, wait. So they did, but then they did an uproar about her following the terms of service. And uh, now she has her channel back and her own category in the search bar, and it's a part of the tags for when you're trying to find somebody streaming. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Put that bitch in its own category. <laughs> yeah, super crazy. So, uh, listen, don't scam anybody. Don't be desperate. You know, Silencer is being very smart, surprisingly, right? Because I gave him two months, <laughs> and it's been like six, okay? <laughs> so, I gave him two months before he fucking caved and got one from a random store, but now he's he's waiting, you know? He's being patient, okay? Yes, sir, um, patient, right? This one, is, it's, a, it's the last topic, okay? And this one's more of a think piece. Uh, two popular streamers that were a part of the esports team called TSM. Um, I was wondering, you know, what happened to those guys, you know? Because I got a lot of memes on my timeline that says, oh, myth fell off, myth fell off. I was like, okay, so what happened to the other people? Yeah. Uh, I go look. They haven't been active for a year. TSM Hamlins uh, just tweeted today for the first time in over six, seven months. And said today was his birthday. He got a big uproar. Happy birthday to Hamlins. And then Daquan, last time I remember him, he had some type of injury and wasn't streaming. Came back for one stream after he had all these health issues. And then he disappeared again. So uh, do you believe that fame and, like, streaming a lot can, like, burn you out and you're just not genuinely interested in it anymore? Oh, yeah. I mean... Especially in the internet, um, just as much 
as good comments can come your way, a lot of fucking negative ones come, and no matter how prepared you say you are, I mean, it's it's bound to happen. Right. It burns you out. All that shit gets to your head, where to the point where you just feel like you need a fucking break from everything to take care of yourself, you know? Right. But, like, no official word, no no statement, no no video. You just drop everything and just continue to do stuff. Uh, do you think that it might be, like, anything that contractual with the team or you just feel like they just burned out? I don't know. Maybe... I mean, it also could be just personal, personal things, you know? I mean, just like, I mean, I know if I was having fucking mental, you know, hardships and just going through a lot of shit, um, if I was going through a lot of shit, I'd just fucking, we get, you know, just remove myself from, from the internet and just the world and try to take care of that first. Right. That's something I would do. <clears throat> so, I don't know, I feel like this might be not all three but possibly maybe some of them and the other ones i don't know maybe they just they just decided to do it all three of them to take care of themselves it's weird it's a weird it's a weird situation to say try to pinpoint what the re- reason was yeah because myth myth is still doing his own thing um they all got popular from fortnite so they grinded the shit out of fortnite um and you know i, I feel like they were sorely missed for the among us era because i feel like they would have blew up even more uh yeah. with their chemistry uh, with their personality, I felt like they could have done something there, um, you know. And like I said, the pandemic might have had an effect on them too. And they just, you know, what they took a step back, mm. and uh, they're not really doing anything yet, you know. Yeah. So, like for example, like this is a uh, from Hanlins. There was a tweet that he says, "Feeling like myself again on October 25." Right. And he hasn't posted since February 4th. Now on August 30th. <clears throat> made an appearance saying that um, they were living together now. Right. So, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, if, if there were, you know, a child involved and all that shit, there's a lot of stress, they wanted to fucking, you know, keep all their mental energy to themselves. <clears throat> I mean, there's yeah. a lot of shit. So definitely, yeah. I feel like, you know, take some time off, get burned out, focus for the family. And come back. I mean, you still have your audience there. Right. Yeah. It just, like, if, I don't know, I just have, I think that everybody, like, once they get something, they don't want it anymore, you know? Like, as a person, like, for me, trying to get into those spaces, it's like, you see these people, and they're like, damn, I don't want it anymore. And I was like, well, why? You know? Other people that may be pursuing it, not only just want, like, a cleared answer, but maybe they could avoid some of the things that led you to making that decision, you know? If it's avoidable. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I thought I thought about it and it was weighing heavy on me because I, I like Daquan as a content creator. You know, funny guys. Funny guys. And incredibly great at the game. Like I said, for Among Us, they would have had a good run, you know? Yeah. They would have had a good run. And it just it just sucks to see that they didn't take advantage of that opportunity. But I'm hoping, like I said, if it's mental health... If it's personal stuff getting in the way, deaths in the family, uh, burnt out, mental burnout, stuff like that in general, uh, the only thing that I could do as a fan is just um, hopefully, you know what I'm saying, knock on wood, and uh, hopefully they get over that hunch and they're just, you know, they're in a good space for him here on now. We don't want another uh, Ithaca situation where a content creator takes their life away uh, because of, you know, certain Crazy. things. Yeah. So, yeah. It all, it all boils down to the mental. Mental, yeah, mental it boils health. down to the mental. Like, I've been there, like, burnt out um, and not wanting to put out stuff. But, I mean, you know, you take a little break and you come back at it and then you, you find out that you still have that love for uh, stuff, you know? So. Yeah. Um, well, that is it for today's video, guys. Um, not video, uh, podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, we added a, a few little things here and there. You know, we had Mrs. Sprewell talking giving her thoughts on certain things uh we dove deep into some allegations here and uh, we also talked about um you know just little things here and there but I, the main focus that i wanted to 100 percent shout out is to the six people that wrote jokes 
Uh, the 12 people that sent it in, you guys were amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, I asked certain people to, to come and say something they didn't want to. So it's whatever, you know. Yep, it's whatever, mate. It's whatever. So we got 37 episodes. Like I said, we're going we're gonna to celebrate, you know, episode 214 the way we celebrated, you know. <laughs> 37. <laughs> You know, it was funny, too, because Cuz Lightyear was like, damn, bro, you're celebrating episode 37. He's like, not even the year episode, the fucking 37th episode. I'm like, yes, you know why? Because I'm fucking killing Spree 37. I have to celebrate it, you know? You it's, have to. In it's in the, the fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Any tips before we head out, Silencer? You can use pineapple as a tenderizer, you know, when you cook. Mexican style, buddy. Right. That sounds nice, too. And you know what? If you take a picture of it for food porn, don't forget to avoid social media platforms and just go ahead and send it, sell it as an NFT. And with that being said, guys, my name is Killing Spree 37. My name is Simon, sir. We're out! Killing Spree 37! 37. 37. Give me some chun chun. The champion of the world, Killing Spree 37!